Good evening, Jackson Chapel. Good evening. We give praises unto God today. We thank God for allowing us to come into this first watch of this uh, revival for Holy Week. We are so grateful that God has allowed us an opportunity to come. We had to go through some storms. Amen. Amen. The wind was blowing. And, and, but uh, nevertheless, God is good. And he's allowed us to come to this place tonight. So let us be rejoiceful. And as we look at our theme for this week, a season of renewal, a season of renewal. So let us be uh, thinking about our theme and praying that God will come and move in this place. Uh, we are in for a blessing this week. So we just want to just give God praises. Amen. Amen. So let us give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. For this is our call to worship. And we're going to do something a little bit different than what we normally do. Tonight, uh, instead of starting out with our song, we're going to start out with our prayer. And followed by our scripture reading. And then we will go into our song of praise and offering. And then we will go into the latter part of our revival, which will contain the, the preaching of God's word. Amen. So at this time, we're going to have the, the right Reverend Dr. Gregory Scott to come and lead us in prayer. The proud pastor of Philip CME Church, former pastor of the chapel. Amen. So we're going to have him come. Amen. It is good to be in the house one more time. Amen. Amen. Good evening, Jackson Chapel. Amen. On this first night of your revival. The psalmist said, Restore us again, O God of our salvation. And I know that tonight we need to be restored. We need to be revived. Because there's so much going on in our world and in our communities and even in our families that we need the restoration and the revival of God in our lives. So will you go with me to the throne of grace? Oh God of our weary years and God of our silent tears. To the God who has brought us thus far on the way. God, it is by your might that you continue to lead us to the light. Heavenly, most eternal God, as we come tonight, we come giving you praise, honor, and glory for being the awesome God that you are. We thank you for meeting us in all the spaces and places we find ourselves. Because God, sometimes in the midst of all that we go through each and every day of our lives, Sometimes we, be, we become so consumed with what's going on around us, God, that we forget about you. But God, we thank you for being a God that continues to care. A God that continues to hold us. A God that continues to be by our side every step of the way. Lord, as we come tonight, we come recognizing, God, that we have not been all that we should be. We have failed you in thought, word, and deed. But God, we still come tonight with our issues. We still come tonight with our stuff. We still come tonight with our problems. We still come tonight even in the midst of some of our conditions. But we come tonight, God, because we know that the only one that can, can help us, the only one that can save us, the only one that can deliver us out of our stuff is you. So God, we come tonight broken. We come tonight in pain. Some of us come tonight, God, because we need a word from you. Because we, we turn on the TV and so much violence and chaos. We, we walk outside into our communities, God, and there's so much violence. We even send our children to school, God, wondering if they're going to come back. But God, we know that, that you are the one that created this world. You are the one that, that shaped it and molded it. And you are the one that created us. And so, God, if there's anyone that knows all about us, it's you. And so, God, we come to you tonight. We come to you tonight open and, 
and ready to receive what you have for us. Lord, as we come tonight, we lift up those families who may be bereaved right now. We pray, God, that you comfort them and you hold them. You, 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 you keep them in your care, letting them know, God, that death is not the end of life, but death is only a transition. Let them know, God, that even though our loved ones may be gone, God, you still help us. Have us in the hollow of your hands. And then, God, there may be some tonight, Lord, that's going through some health challenges. God, we know you as the great physician. We know you as the great healer. So, God, we lift up our conditions to you. We lift up our issues to you. We lift up our health challenges to you, knowing, God, that you are a miracle worker. Knowing that you've healed us time and time again. And so, God, we, we come lifting up those to you and, and decreeing and declaring right now healing in the name of Jesus. And then, God, we know that there are some tonight who will just come burdened down with the issues of life. But, God, we know you as a deliverer. Because when we look back over our lives, Lord, we see that we have a trophy case full of times you brought us out. We, we have a testimony of how many times you brought us and lifted us up out of our conditions. We have a, 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 a testimony, God, of how many times you worked it out on our behalf. So, God, we know that you, you can do it. We know that you can make a way out of no way because we've seen it. We've experienced it. And so, God, we come tonight, come tonight waiting and depending and trusting in you. For, Lord, we come tonight knowing that weeping may endure for a night, but joy, but joy comes in the morning. And, Lord, tonight as we come, we just come lifting up the pastor of this church, continue to hold him, continue to strengthen him for the work that you have for him to do. And then, Lord, for the preacher tonight, we ask God that you lower him down into your storehouse of wisdom and knowledge. So he comes up with power to preach a word to your people, a word of hope, a word of healing, a word of deliverance, a word of encouragement, a word of transformation, a word of liberation, a word that will help us navigate this world in which we live. And God, when it's all said and done, we will give you the praise and we will give you the glory for you are God and God alone. And it's in Jesus most blessed name we do pray and the people of God said, amen. amen. Well, scripture, we invite you to turn your Bibles and turn your attention to the 26th chapter of the gospel according by St. Matthew. All right. The Gospel according by St. Matthew, chapter 26, beginning at the first verse. And it came to pass, when Jesus had finished all these sayings, he said unto his disciples, Ye know that after two days is the feast of the Passover, and the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. Then assembled together the chief priests and the scribes and the elders of the people unto the palace of the high priest who is called Caiaphas, and consumed that they might take Jesus by subtlety and kill him. But they said, not on the, on the feast day, lest there be an uproar among, among the people. Now when Jesus was in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, have an ambassador box of very precious ointment and poured it on his head as he sat at me. But when his disciples saw it, they said they had indignation, saying, To what purpose is this waste? For this ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor. When Jesus understood it, he said unto them, why trouble ye the woman? For she has wrought a good work upon me. For ye have the poor always with you, but me ye have not always. For in 
that she has poured this ointment on my body, she did it for my burial. Verily I say unto you, whosoever, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, there shall also this, this that this woman has done be told for a memorial unto her. Thirteen verses of the Fulte of Scripture. May God bless the reading of his word for the good and the edifying of our soul. Amen.
How many of you know he'll fix it? How many of you know he's fixing it right now? Amen. If anybody here know that he'll fix it. Amen. Amen. At this time, let us engage ourselves and prepare our hearts and minds for giving. For the Bible says that the Lord loves a cheerful giver. And it also reminds us that it is more blessed to give than to receive. And then it says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. But then one thing that I'm reminded of, Mary, is that a songwriter put it like this, that you can't beat God's giving no matter how you try. For the more you give, the more he gives to you. Well, well, so as the usher comes, let us give as it is purposes in our own heart. For God will take it. God will bless it. Somebody say press down, shake it together, and run it over. Well, well, we know he's able. Father, we thank you now for this offering that has been lifted. We thank you for those that gave and we ask, Father, that you bless those that didn't have it to give. Now, Father, as we bring this offering unto you, oh, Father, we ask that you would wave your hands across it. Father, that you would make it what you would have it to be. Father, press down, shaking together, and running over. We give you thanks in advance. For these blessings. In Jesus name we pray. And the people of God said. Amen. 
Amen. All righty. What time is it? Preaching time. Amen. It's preaching time. Amen. And I have the awesome task, the awesome task to defer the introduction. Amen. I have the awesome task to defer it. Because when I heard that, 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 that Dr. Scott was coming, I said, I'm going to put him to work. Didn't I say that, Robert? <laughs> Amen. So I'm finna, I did that just wasn't all just for him to do the prayer. So now he's fixing to have to come and present the speaker tonight. That's why I have an awesome task. Mayor says, I can do that. I can defer. Amen. After being in management a long time, you learn how to do those kind of things. Amen. So at this time, we're going to have Dr. Scott to come back and present our preacher for the night. Amen. Boy, it's good to have friends, ain't it? <laughs> amen. Amen. To this wonderful pastor, David Young, and to his wonderful wife, First Lady Young, and to the Jackson Chapel Church family, I have been given the awesome task. <laughs> Who can I defer to? <laughs> to introduce this preacher for tonight. Um, really, he needs no introduction. Um, because he's passed this way before. He has formerly pastored here at Jackson Chapel. He is currently on the ministerial staff here at Jackson Chapel. And he has been a worker for the Lord for a mighty long time. I count him as a friend, as a colleague, and as a mentor. As I said a few weeks ago, <laughs> whenever I find myself in some situations, because all of us, and if you've ever been in pastoral ministry, you find yourself in some situations. And, and when I was pastoring here at Jackson Chapel, I would call him up and say, how'd you deal with him? <laughs> and he said, Scott, much prayer, much prayer, much prayer. But we made it. And I am so grateful for, for this opportunity to introduce this preacher. Um, and I just want to say thank you, Jackson Chapel, for my time here was well spent. And this preacher tonight is not only a God sent preacher, but he has a heart for people. And I thank him for that. I thank him for helping me navigate through some, as I said, some difficult times in my ministry. And he always gave it to me straight. And I appreciate him for that. I could go on and on and on, but you did not come to hear me. You came to hear the preacher. So the next voice you will hear after this choir sings will be that of Reverend Hurley V. Grissom. Raise your hand and say, Pastor Grissom, Pastor Grissom. preach the word. Preach the word. Pastor, Grissom, Pastor Grissom, preach the word. Pastor Grissom, I know you can, know you can. Preach, the preach the word. Amen.
share with you on this night the first watch of this revival I want to thank the pastor of this church Amen. Pastor Young for allowing me to come All right. and I would like to thank Dr. Scott my good friend the pastor of the first church Phillips Amen. for a introduction and I began to look around and thought he was talking about somebody else I, but it didn't dawn on me he was talking about me and I thank him for him considering me as a friend to my good friend T.N. the right reverend make it a lot of water has gone under the bridge and a lot of miles have been covered by what you see here. Going from hither to thon. Trying to say a word for the Lord. Well, well. I'm not going to keep you long, but I hope to keep you strong. And All right. it's, it's, it's odd how God works. And when Reverend Bankhead was reading the scripture, he talked to, or read on two characters that I'm going to bring up tonight. One is the woman in the alabaster box and the one who betrayed Jesus. And then there's a third one which you will find out. There are only three scriptures I want to share and they're just a verse apiece. The first one is taken from the gospel according to St. Matthew. And the uh, third chapter in the 13th verse, and it says there, then Jesus went from Galilee to the Jordan River to be baptized by John. Then it's the gospel of St. Luke, and I believe it's the seventh chapter in the 37th verse if you bear with me and uh, it says when a certain 
immoral woman of that city heard it eating them. She brought a beautiful alabaster box filled with precious perfume. And then Luke 22 and 21. And there it reads, but here at this table, sitting among us as a friend is a man who will betray me, for it has been determined that the Son of Man must die. But what sorrow awaits the one who betrays him? Amen. There's another passage that I will delay, but it is dealing with the baptism of Jesus by his cousin John, a story that we're all familiar with. Let us pray. Gracious Father, we come tonight thanking you for this first watch in Revival Week. Thank you for bringing us safe, Lord, and allowing us to come and share what we have whether it be a speaking voice or hearing ears, loving hearts and remembrances of revivals gone by. But whatever it is, Lord, let us feast upon it, that it will make us stronger, that it would make us better, that it would make us wiser and to understand the awesome power that you possess and the awesome power that you planted within us through the power of your Holy Spirit. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh God, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. Pastor Young alluded to the fact that we're living in a crazy world and a crazy society. Earlier today, I was sharing with someone about a Christmas or, or an Easter play that my eldest daughter, Alexis, was a part of. You've heard me allude to it before. She was playing the part of a deer. And there was a, another person playing the part of a rabbit. And there was a scene where they were at an Easter egg hunt. And Alexis turned to the rabbit and said, why do humans do such things? And it made me think, why do humans do such things? Why is it that we even have to be revived? Why is it that we keep going back and drinking up the same bit of water that we drank from before it would seem that sooner or later we would get it and understand that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. All right, all right. But nevertheless, we must pause and think that without God, there is no remission of sin. Without Christ, his son, there is no remission of sin. I want you to think along these lines, strange things that happen on the way to Calvary. There's only three I'm going to deal with, but there were a lot of strange things. I'm glad that Pastor Young uh, chose me to be on the first watch and he left the big guns for Thursday and uh, Friday night. But uh, I think about these three things. The baptism, the anointing, and the betrayal. All right, all right. The baptism, the anointing, and the betrayal. For the Christian believer, Holy Week, which is at the tail end of Lent, is one of the most vital uh, times of our expressing ourselves in servitude toward Jesus the Christ. 
It is our week that we, or you might say month, that we go into fasting and we turn our attentions to the crucifixion, the death and burial and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But we also make an effort to use the agape love that should go from heart to heart and breast to breast. All right. The kind of love that was intended for us to have toward our fellow man and toward humankind. If we are truly connected to the Lord, we cannot help but to go down memory lane and thank God for all of his wonderful blessings. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I've been blessed. Yes, it's good to know that God's blessing keeps on rolling. Even in the midst of all of our sorrows and all of our pains and all of our suffering, God is still in the blessing business. Yes, uh, he thought so much of us that he gave uh, the greatest gift of all, he gave a martyred son uh, and the power of the Holy Ghost that we may look to the cross and understand that unlike Catholicism, Jesus is no longer hanging there, but he is free from the cross. And he dwells among us. Oh, I wish I had a praying church. Yes, and then there is the power of the Holy Ghost, uh, that intricate part of us uh, that guides us and leads us and makes us want to shout, makes us want to cry, makes us want to live right, All right. Mm -hmm. and do the right thing. Yeah. Yes, as I go down memory lane, I remember 1959, where the legacy of my life changed on a Palm Sunday morning. Well, well. Where I heard Potts preach the sermon. And I, as I said at your church, and my sister walked down the aisle with hands locked together. Well. To give our life to Christ to say, I yield. I yield. Right. Ever since that day, my life has not been the same. I've had some good days. Uh -huh. I've had some bad days. Well, I've had hills to climb, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor God see you big bread. I wish I had a plain church. I'm sure we all have our own unique stories of just what God has done for us. I remember a song from a boyhood that said, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, Oh, where would I be? Well, one thing, I would be eternally lost. My soul would not be worth a nickel. I would be as lost as a ball in high weeds, as lost as a ghost ship on a mighty ocean. I would have no destiny of the future, but my destiny would be sealed. But thanks be to God, he thought it not robbery to send his son into a dying world to let us know that there's power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. Well, For your hearing, let me lead you to these three events. On this journey to Calvary, we call it Galgotha. We call it the hill. But it all boils down to the same thing. It finally comes down to where Jesus gave his life as a ransom for all mankind. Well, well, well. But long before uh, he gave his life, uh, there was a series of events that took place in his life. Yes. Uh, we find in Matthew 3 uh, and 13, uh, the baptism uh, of Jesus uh, down at the 
uh, the river Jordan uh, coming to his cousin John the Baptist uh, who is uh, the forerunner who is called the Baptist who is called the Immerser he said I baptize you with water but there comes one mightier than I who shall baptize you with fire and with the Holy Ghost. Well, well. Uh, the story doesn't begin there, you know, but it begins in a house where Mary uh, comes to visit her cousin Elizabeth, mm -hmm. and they are both with child. The story begins there to let us know that there was something about not only Jesus, but there was something unique about John the Baptist as well. well, well. Uh, little did they both know that uh, their lives, uh, the, the Elizabeth and Mary and the son's lives would cross paths 30 years later. Come on. All right. uh, but they should have known something was up. For when Mary walked into the house, uh, John the Baptist leaped in his brother's womb yeah. to let her know that I am the one that God has chosen to be the forerunner of Jesus. Right. Every now and then, we have to be a forerunner, amen? amen? And that's what I am tonight. I'm the forerunner. <laughs> and I'm going to leave it up to Stuart and Baker to bring it on home. Well, well. But I just say tonight that I'm glad to have the opportunity <laughs> to tell my side of the story. Yeah. For God has been good to me and I know it's a kind of a cliche. He's been better to me than I've been to myself. I don't know about you, but every now and then, we beat up on ourselves. Amen? Uh, we, we, we get into a rut. But I thank God that I've got friends to my right, friends to my left, friends to my front, front that can give me uh, inspiration to let me know uh, it's going to be all right. Because God is still in the plan. Am I right about it, Jackson Chapel? Yeah. Oh, I want you to know tonight that God is good. He's a magnificent God. He's a prayer-hearing God. He's a God that sits high and looks low. He's a God that has power in his hands. Yes, we're living in turbulent times. Yes, the baptism of Jesus was important. Three things that would happen. One would baptize him, baptize him, one would anoint him, and one would kill him. Uh, now we come to the anointing. Uh, it says in Luke 7, 37, All right. now there was a sinful woman in the city who uh, learned uh, that he was at the table in the house of the Pharisee. I started to be mean tonight. I, I started to change and say he was in the house of Wyatt and Frank. But I, no, no, I didn't say that in the Bible. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. It said he was in the house of the Pharisee. And uh, what's unique about this is that uh, John represents the holiness of God, the anointing power through baptism. But the sinful woman that comes uh, she represents the sin of the world. But she comes to do a task uh, that only she was chosen to do. Well, well. She came in the midst of these Pharisees and others. And she had some precious ornament. And she began uh, to open the bottle. Uh, to take the ornament out and to pour it on Jesus. You know, you always got some instigators in the crowd. No, no. Uh, and they said, why is this woman wasting this oil like this? For it could have been sold and they could have got a lot of money for it. But what she realized and what we ought to realize tonight, there is some things that money just came back. Well, well. Uh, and so she went on with a task and Jesus he knew what it was all about, uh, but they failed to see uh, what was going on. 
And uh, they had began to talk and to murmur. But Jesus said, you don't understand. I'm being pre prepared for my final chapter. Uh, we all have a final chapter in our lives. We don't know when and we don't know where God is going to call us home. But thanks be to God that God gave Jesus the heads up to let him know the hour is getting closer. Soon and very soon uh, you will be delivered into the hands of evil men. Uh, I want to tell you that Jesus is not the only one that has been be delivered into the hands of evil men. Uh, we had an evil man to come out of Washington, didn't we? And we were delivered into the hands of an evil man with evil cohorts. Amen. But God is still in the blessing business. Uh, and what God can do, he can turn that situation around. And the man that said, lock her up, got locked up. Amen. Because God, God, God is in the blessing business. God is able to deliver in a time of trouble. Uh, yes, this anointment went on. And Jesus uh, realized that his hour was coming closer. Uh, yes, when we look at all the things we've been through in the last three years, we can say that we've suffered. Well, uh, we can say that we were nervous. Yes. We can say that we were infected. We can say that we were let down. But one thing about it, uh, we are still standing. Yes. And God is still blessing. Yes. God is still doing his thing. And he expects us to do our thing. To let the dying world in which we live know that Jesus died, that we might have a right to the tree of life. Yes. Finally, Jesus, our Savior and our Lord, uh, our Master, he suffered betrayal, uh, not by a foe, but by one that was posing as a friend. Well. I, I just want to tell you, in case you don't know this, everybody in the church is not saved. Everybody in the church is not a friend, but I can still take service in that song that said, what a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and grief to bear. What a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. He had an imposter that was at the table with him, uh, one that kept the bag of silver, the one that said uh, that he would be with Jesus, just like Peter said that he would be with Jesus. But every now and then, we got to understand that we're dealing with human hearts. Uh, we're dealing with human minds. And what we said on yesterday may not hold true today. But God still is a forgiving God. And God is still a God who is able to, uh, to deliver you. He's able to deliver me. And they said that night, uh, uh, Jesus said, uh, he said, uh, the one that dippeth in the dish with me uh, is the one that should betray me. Uh, they all had a little guilty conscience. Uh, you know, sometimes we think things, they get in outside our head uh, and we wonder how it got there. Well, Satan is on his job and he's always trying uh, to turn us around. Uh, for the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 11 and 14, uh, uh, Satan uh, is saying, marvel not uh, uh, that Satan is transformed into an angel of light. Am I right, right about it? 1 Peter 5 and 8 says, be sober, be vigilant for your adversary the devil, walking about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. So Satan is busy. He's going to and fro throughout the earth trying to take God's kingdom down. But Jesus said, don't worry about the betrayer for my father has everything already worked out. Ain't God all right? Uh, yes, uh, this world we live in is a perilous world. It's crazy weather, crazy earth. 
uh, crazy people, uh, but yet God is still on the throne. Uh, we wonder tonight, uh, would we get here at all? Or whether it was all around us, rain over here, wind over there. But guess what? If we had wanted to go to Walmart, we'd have got in our car and drove down to Decatur. But we're here in the church tonight to lift up the holy name of Jesus, to say that Jesus is all right. He's my friend. He's my all in all. Yes, we live in a crazy world. Uh, family killing family. Family killing friends. Uh, we are living in a crazy world where people are killing classmates. People are killing former teachers. What in the world is going on? They used to say, if you read the news, you'll know. Well, I want to tell you, if you read the Bible, you'll know. It said in the last day, parents, uh, kids, and they would turn against each other. The brother and sister would turn against each other. Yes, it said earthquakes would be in diverse places. It would say you won't know one season from another. Am I right about it, church? Yes, it's perilous time. But I stopped by Jackson Chapel to let you know that God is still on your side. Don't worry about the naysayers. Don't worry about the haters. Uh, when they came for Jesus, uh, there was a prerequisite that there was already set. Oh, 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 Judas had said the one that I kiss. Uh, He's the one, uh, uh, then you can get him, but you better hold him, because he's kind of tricky. He, he might get out of your grasp, uh, and he came down, and he reached out for his master, and he kissed him. At that time, they came in uh, on Jesus, like they did Trump yesterday, and they want to let him away, uh, and they let him away. Uh, they, judged, they took him from Judgment Hall to Judgment Hall. Uh, Yes, uh, old, old Pilate had sense enough uh, not to get in the middle of it. Old Pilate said, uh, I find no fault in the man. Just give him a good whipping and turn him loose. Uh, but they weren't satisfied. You know, sometimes people keep digging until they find the dirt that they want. Uh, they said, well, he's an enemy of the state. Or, uh, don't you know he doesn't even uh, believe in the king? He doesn't believe uh, in our uh, 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 authority here in Rome, uh, we ought to take him and uh, crucify him. Now, Pilate said, I washed my hands of the matter. You can do what you want to do. Well, they took my master. They took my Lord. Uh, they whipped him all night long. Uh, but they tell me, they tell me uh, uh, that they took the nine cattails and they just beat him down. But Jesus kept on trucking up the hill called Calvary with the pond around his head, blood dripping down. I better leave some room for Stuart now. I better leave a little room for Peter on Friday night. But you know what happened, don't you? It didn't end there. The blood streamed down like a raging river. The steps got weak, but God is strong. I wish I could finish this thing, but they would have put me out. I don't want to get put out of the church, but I want to tell you, God is, God is, God is sitting on the throne and on the right hand, and on the right hand, and on the right hand is the son Jesus. Still the baker tell you how he got there. Hallelujah. 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 He's all right. He's an old time God. Oh, yes, he is. David, somebody said he may not come when you want him. But he's always on time. Isn't that strange? How you pray to God and he don't answer it when you prayed the prayer. 
and then look like out of nowhere. A blessing to show up here and a blessing to show up there. I've never seen the righteous forsaken. I've never seen God see begging bread. I will lift my eyes to the hills from which cometh my help. Listen, where your help come from? It comes from the Lord. Weeping, endure it for the night. But what happened in the morning, Grissom? Joy. Sweet joy. Wonderful joy. Prayer answering joy. Comes in the morning. Well, he's all right.
Amen. 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 God is good. Man, I didn't know uh, that uh, George Jefferson could preach. But, but George preached tonight. Amen. Amen. He, you know how George used to walk through that coat back. Yeah, he, he, he started doing that walk. Uh, for a minute there, I thought he was going to say, move it on up. Amen. Amen. But we thank, we, we thank God for this preacher tonight. Amen. Let's give God some praise in here. Amen. Truly, uh, this begins the, the first watch. And uh, as he, he mentioned in his, in his message, that, you know, I was thinking about this as I was coming. You know, we always know that uh, regardless of what, we still have a lot of growth or growing to do. Oh, absolutely. Amen? Amen. And in saying that is, he mentioned that, that we had wind and we had rain and, and uh, clouds and lightning and all those things were transpiring. Amen. It would have been easy to say, well, we need to postpone to another day. But you know, God is still in the blessing business. Amen. And, 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 and I'm so glad that you felt that it was necessary to come out and, and give God praise. Because we can do anything else, like he said. But when it comes to serving God, sometimes we slack. Amen. But I thank God uh, for this night. And uh, I thank God for uh, Dr. Scott and, and Pastor Amen. Bankhead. And, Amen. And uh, I just, I'm, I'm so, so excited about what's going to transpire the rest of the week. I, I think George, he was so excited. He, he, he started hollering out, he's he going to leave some for somebody else. Amen. But, but we, we're grateful. Uh, for Reverend Grissom tonight. Amen. Amen. And let me thank this choir. Amen. Amen. Thank you all so much. And these musicians and, and all of you that came out. And, and, and Albert, he was coming in with his umbrella. And, and Jeff was making his, his normal phone call. I always have to imitate him. <laughs> Passed on ready. <laughs> that, that, that's what my voice may have said. He said he, my, yeah, my voice was, Passed on ready. Said, all right. <laughs> Come rain or shine, he wanted them to know he was ready. So we thank God for it. Amen. So again, this, this is uh, Holy Week. And we're looking forward to what we have for the rest of this week and going on to Sunday. And uh, there was something about the rest of that story. Amen. Because we preached on Sunday the title, Almost But Not Yet. So, so we getting there. Amen. We getting to Sunday morning. Amen. And then you hear that, that roar where somebody says, now the moment that we've been waiting for, at the time when the stone was rolled away. Amen. And they came to find an empty tomb. Amen. So we get into the rest of the story. So I can't wait for tomorrow night, and I can't wait to Friday night, and I can't wait until Sunday morning and Sunday afternoon. Amen. Because our young folk got something in store for us. Amen? Amen. 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 So uh, let us uh, do this. I, 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 we have to do this, and it's a necessity for us to do this because we can't take it for granted. But we're going to open the doors of the church. And at this time, there may be somebody out there today that don't know the Lord and the partner they're seeing. There may be somebody that's watching us via Facebook, and they're looking for a, a relationship with Christ. And then tonight would be a good night. Uh, you may reach us by phone or you can reach us by Facebook or through Messenger. If you want to become a member, if you want to accept Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. But we know that God is, is still God and, and it's good to be able to, to share this, not only in person, but to show this over uh, social media. So if there be one tonight, we ask that you would come, for this is our invitation. 
And as we give that invitation, we want you to bow your heads because there's uh, we've had some members that lost loved ones. We want to pray for the Langham family and the loss of their loved one. And, and I, when I looked and I saw that picture, it's Nate and I and, uh, saw 100. Amen. Amen. Let's, let's give God some praise. Amen. 100 years. So we want to pray for their family and pray for all of those. Uh, uh, one of my friends uh, was funeralized on yesterday, a minister, Drenda Stennett, uh from Athens. Uh, she had a long battle with cancer, and her family is, is going through a struggle right now in, in her loss. But we know God is still God. So as we bow our heads, let us pray for those that are sick and those that are, are going through bereavement. Father God, on this first night of revival, first of all, we want to say thank you. Thank you. We thank you for what you have done for us. We can truly say that you are good. In spite of our situation and circumstances, Father, you have kept us in the palms of your hand. We ask God now that you would just touch the family of those that are going through bereavement. We pray for the Langham family. We pray for the Stennett family. We pray for all of those, Father, that are going through these tough times. But Father, we want to thank you for being our comforter. For you will comfort us in times such as these. For David reminded us in times like these, we are to look to the hills from which cometh our help. For all of our help cometh from the Lord. Lord, we say thank you right now. Lord, we say thank you right now. And then, Father, we pray that you would just forgive us for all of our wrongdoings. For we realize even in our best days, we have all sinned and fallen short of your glory. Oh, Father, we just ask now that you would create in us a clean heart and renew within us a right spirit. For this is the season of renewal. Father, fix us. Fix us and make us what you would have us to be. And Father, let us now grasp hold to your hand that we may walk this Christian walk. That not only will we just walk, Father, but we'll tell everybody about a risen Savior that died on Calvary and rose that third day morning with all power in his hand to save a sin-sick and dying world. Oh, Father, now as we prepare to leave here tonight, Father, we just ask that you would keep us in your care. Father, we thank you for this first night. We thank you for this evangelist. Father, may you continue to lift him up. May you continue to hold him. Oh, Father, we pray that you would just continue to keep Pastor Scott. Bless his church and bless his entire church family and his home, his children and his grandchildren. Oh, Father, bless every home that's represented in this place tonight. Bless every home that's represented on Facebook tonight. And those that will watch on, on, on YouTube, Father, we just ask that this would be a blessing. That somebody that wasn't here on tonight will be anxious to get here on tomorrow night. Well, well. And those that wouldn't, won't be here tomorrow night will be anxious to get here on Friday night. Right. And those that don't make it on Friday night will be anxious to get here on Sunday morning. Yes. Because they've heard about a risen Savior. Amen. We say thank you right now. We say thank you right now. We say thank you right now in the magnificent name that's above every name. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray that every heart say together, amen, amen, and amen. Amen. So we want to say again, thank God for tonight. And I want... you have enjoyed our service with pastor david t young and we'll see you next week at the same time may god bless you